and the last one, which is other, what do you think falls in the category of other? I mean, if you got your hands, your face, your back, your neck, your legs, and your fingers and toes, so other falls under the category of internal, that'd be like stomach. You ingested something, you thought you were picking up uh, somebody's Pepsi and it was something else. It could be vapors, chemical from, you walk in a chemical room and there's vapor leaking, uh, paint fumes or uh, any kind of vapor liquid that goes internal. It could even be a liquid that splashes on you and absorbs through your skin. There's a lot of chemicals that pesticides that you're dealing with that if you touch it will absorb through your skin and it falls under the category of other. So that's where that one comes in. Heavy loads. When it comes to lifting heavy loads, there's five things that you need to do. First thing you want to do is if you need help to pick something up, you need to ask for help. And speaking from experience with talking to students, students never want to talk to someone else. They don't want to communicate. And they're always stronger than they think they are. And so they tend to try to pick something up that's too big for them. And so it's too busy. Everyone else is working. I just want to pick it up. Or nobody else is in the shop. I'm all by myself. I need to pick this up. So they just try to pick it up. Sometimes it's better to wait or to find some other means to pick this thing up rather than just picking it up. I'm in a hurry, I just want to get on this table. I don't want to go get a forklift. I just want to pick it up and go. And so if you need help, ask for it. Evaluate the task. Look at these boxes that are here. They're kind of long. They're pretty heavy. If you try to move them, they're not going to move very easy. And so you kind of look at it. Can I pick it up or not? If they were filled full of styrofoam, kind of pick it up. Oh, it's kind of light. I could pick it up and move it. When you try to move these, you'll find out that you're probably not going to be able to move them by yourself. And so evaluate the task. How heavy are they? Can I move it myself? Do I need to get help? Do I need to wait a little bit? Check the path. I want to move these boxes from here over to those shelves. What is in my way? Do I need to move the table? Do I need to move some chairs? Do I need to get you guys to move out of the way? Make sure there's nothing between me and where I want to go before I pick it up and think, oh, I got to move this table and set it back down. If you're using a partner, you need to communicate. How are we going to pick it up? Are we going to pick it up on three? Or are we going to pick it up on, we're going to say one, two, three, and then pick it up on four? And so you're like picking it up oblong. You need to communicate. Who's going to pick it up? How are we going to pick it up? What time are we going to pick it up? Are you going to go first? Where are we going to put it? So communicate with whoever you're borrowing. And the last one, which is the one that gets most people, is the proper lifting techniques. Half of my students use improper techniques three quarters of the time that they pick an object up because it's fast and simple just to bend over. <clears throat> and in your handouts, if you go to the very back page, it says weight lifting tip offered. Scientists have figured out that when you bend over and lift 70 pounds from the floor, the pressure on your lower spine amounts to 1,050 pounds. That's a lot of pressure to put on your back. If you stoop without bending your back and lift with your legs, the same weight is equal to 220 pounds. So that's the difference between stooping over and picking it up or bending with your knees and picking it up. The pressure on your spinal is 1,050 versus 220. Why are there so many back injuries? Because most people just bend over and pick it up because it's simpler than bending their knees because then their legs get tired. So bend your knees. And we're going to go through and talk about the proper technique for lifting up here in a little while. <clears throat> hand signals. What are some reasons why I want to use hand signals? I don't want you to see the answers. That's one. <laughs> What's that? It's too noisy. If there's too much noise taking place, uh, place, you have a machine that's operating, the engine's too loud, you're trying to talk to the guy and you're like, you know, shut it off, do something. Too noisy. What's another reason? 